Hello there, travelers, and welcome to my tavern, The Lucky Griffin. My name is Quincy, and I have the honor and privilege of welcoming you tonight to this year's Elder Scrolls Online 2024 Global Reveal. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, we do have a few moments before the actual show begins, so have something to eat. You can't expect to walk into a tavern and not be fed, you know. <laughs> now, I have something hearty or a light-filling treat for you to pick yourself back up from that last adventure if you'd like. Wonderful. I have a few things getting started in the kitchen back there, so let's see what we can cook up in the next few minutes, shall we?
Well, it certainly looks like you enjoyed that food, my friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that the meals that we were able to provide keep you in the fight just a little bit longer in your upcoming adventures in Tamriel. And I look very much forward to hearing of all of your epic adventures and quests. But my time is at an end right now. Thank you again for joining us today. Let's see what the future has in store in the Elder Scrolls Online 2024 Global Reveal. Starting now. Until next time, my friends, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, and as always, be safe out there. Enjoy the show. Welcome everyone to the 2024 Elder Scrolls Online Global Reveal. Today, we'll share all of the details of our 2024 plans, including ESO's new chapter. But first, I'd like to take a moment to talk about what ESO means to all of us, here at ZeniMax Online and to all of you. We built ESO as a virtual world centered around Elder Scrolls lore, where you can go anywhere, play in any style you want with endless customization, and have the freedom to role play as anyone you want and also to be a safe harbor from the often unpredictable and complex outside world. Just take a step back to the game's early days and see how much we've accomplished. From taking on Moloch Ball with the help of Cadwell and Darian Gautier, 
fighting other players to claim territory in Cyrodiil and the Ruby Throne and our amazing PvP system, slaying dragons in the sandy canyons of elsewhere with Chimera and Abner Tharn, fencing a fortune in stolen goods at your friendly neighborhood outlaw refuge, and so much more. We take you through all of the lands of Tamriel, filled with memorable characters who return again and again to provide companionship, humor, and drama. Our stories are among the best in the genre, and our content also includes game systems like Companions, Antiquities, Tales of Tribute, Dungeons, PvP, the list goes on and on. With ESO, you can pick and choose what fits your virtual life in Tamriel. And later this year, we'll hit an amazing and important milestone, 10 years in Tamriel. Our history, of course, goes back even farther to Zoss's founding in 2007, and many ESO developers have been with us for 15 years or more. I can't speak of the studio's history without acknowledging the profound impact that Robert Altman had on my life and that of everyone at Zoss. As CEO of ZeniMax Media, who passed away in 2021, Robert was a true champion of the game, and he was a friend and mentor to all of us. He is very much missed, but Zoss is stronger because of the foundation he helped build during our formative years. ESO has grown over the years to be 24 million players, including gamers from all over the world. Originally in English, French, and German, we now offer localization in Chinese, Japanese, Russian, and Spanish. And ESO developers now stretch from west coast of the USA through Austin, Texas, to our headquarters in Maryland, and eastward to Budapest, Hungary, where we recently opened ZeniMax Online, Hungary. ESO is truly a global phenomenon. Everyone at Zoss considers the ESO community part of the family. It's not just a hashtag. That feeling of caring and connection begins in our studio, and I'm very proud to be part of it. Remember that ESO launched in April 2014, but that was just on PC. It launched on Xbox and PlayStation in June 2015. So, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary over 15 months in 2024 and 2025. Expect community events around the globe. We announced the first of these already. It's in the Netherlands this coming spring. Thank you to everyone who signed up already. We'll have another large community event in 2025 in the Baltimore, Washington area of the USA to mark the 10th anniversary of ESO's console launch. And a few more events sprinkled between them. We will post information on all of our anniversary celebration plans on social media and elderscrollsonline.com. The team has prepared special 10-year anniversary rewards for many of our in-game events happening in 2024 and 2025. Some you can start earning right now. Stay tuned for details. We're eager to celebrate and to kick things off in earnest in just a few months. I can't wait to see all of you at the in-person events. And now it's time to look forward to 2024's new content. ESO's newest chapter features everything that makes ESO special, exploring a region of Tamriel well known to Elder Scrolls fans, telling an amazing story that goes deep into the lore of the region, and adding a new gameplay with a system called Scribing, which allows players to customize some of their abilities. The chapter is called Gold Road, and it takes place on the borders of Cyrodiil, Gold Coast, and Valenwood. So let's start the show and see all the details with the global premiere of the 2024 ESO Gold Road trailer. Enjoy and see you in Tamriel.
up, everyone? You just saw the world premiere trailer for our upcoming chapter, The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road. I'm Gina Bruno, ESO Senior Community Manager, and today I'm joined by The Elder Scrolls Online's own creative director, Rich Lambert. Hey, everyone. I'm thrilled to be back again for this year's ESO Global Reveal, and boy, do we have a lot of exciting things to share with you all. The team has been working super hard on 2024's new adventures and features, and it's gonna be another amazing year for The Elder Scrolls Online. Well, the truth is the team's been working super hard for the past 16 years. And Rich, you and I have actually been here from the very beginning in 2007. It's wild looking back for sure. I remember the days of being able to fit the entire team into a minivan and all go out to lunch together. And a lot has changed since then. And now we're suddenly about to celebrate 10 years of being live with 40 plus major content updates and a community that literally spans the globe. It's amazing how much we've done, and it certainly doesn't feel like 16 years have passed already. And now that we're looking ahead to what's coming in 2024, why don't you start us off with an overview about this year's adventure and story? Last year, we saw players explore the Talvani Peninsula and Apocrypha Zones, and delved into a story surrounding the Prince of Knowledge, Hermaeus Mora, and master the magics of the Arcanist class. This year, we're inviting players to venture into a Colovian region known as the West Weald. And this region spans the western borders of Cyrodiil to the north and the eastern tip of Valenwood, and many Elder Scrolls players will probably recognize this location from Tess 4 Oblivion. In our time, a dense jungle has suddenly appeared overnight along the Valenwood border, and the whole region is suffering from a rise in attacks from a mysterious new kind of Daedra. So the new zone will be familiar for those of you who played Oblivion, but there's something big going on behind the scenes that's causing all this chaos. We're doing something we've never done before in ESO, and we're introducing a whole new Daedric Prince. That is a really big deal. It is, and we are really excited about it. The Gold Road storyline focuses on the return of a forgotten prince named Athelia. And it was great to be able to work with BGS to bring our vision for this new power to life. And we think folks are going to love what we've created. In last year's Necrom chapter, we dropped a major cliffhanger. Mysterious forces discovered the existence of this forgotten Daedric Prince, Athelia. In Gold Road, you'll discover that Prince is now free with dire consequences for all of Tamriel. I don't want to go into too much detail yet because we'll be diving deeper into the story shortly, but this is really big and we are very excited to see how our community reacts as they learn more about Athelia and her allies. All right, so we have a new zone and a story about the return of a long lost Daedric Prince but there's something else arriving with the Gold Road chapter that Matt touched on that our players have been asking about for a long time, and that's scribing. Yes, and this is definitely something that the community has been asking about for years at this point. This chapter's big new system, scribing, is a way for players to customize their character builds. It's our take on a precursor to the spellcrafting systems from previous Elder Scrolls games, with some tweaks to balance to ensure that it works with our game's combat. So why don't you talk a little bit about how this system works? What does it actually allow players to do? With scribing, players tap into the fundamental elements of magic by unlocking special skills that they can then customize in many different ways. You'll be able to change things like the way a skill interacts with the world, its unique effects, and more. There's also many ways to customize these unique abilities, allowing players to further tailor their builds to their unique needs. We'll go into a lot more detail on scribing a little bit later, and we'll have a lot more info throughout the year, but we're very excited about this system, and it's really another way players can truly play the way they want to play. Well, we clearly have a lot to cover throughout the show, so let's dig in. In the past, we've told stories that feature Daedric princes, emperors and tyrants, heroes, and all sorts of legendary monsters. Since our launch in 2014, we've continued to add to ESO's legacy with new stories that build upon and even add to Elder Scrolls lore in all new ways. And this year's tale is no exception. So let's kick things off with the lead for this zone, Ed Stark, who is going to share more about the new chapter's main storyline, including the Forgotten Prince. Hello, everyone. I am absolutely thrilled to talk to all of you about the story and the adventures you'll experience in the new Gold Road chapter. I was the lead for the High Isle and Greymore chapters, as well as the Merkmire DLC, and I'm having a lot of fun adding to the Elder Scrolls universe. Every part of Tamriel is unique and has its own emergent storylines, and Gold Road is no different. The Westweald region lies just east 
of the Gold Coast. Ruled by the Colovian Count Calantius, it is an independent nation allied to the Imperial forces currently occupying nearby Cyrodiil. And it is under attack. Sweltering jungles replaced a third of the Westweald seemingly overnight. While the Wood Elves in the region seem friendly and as bemused by the situation as the displaced Imperials, Count wants to find out what happened and how he can keep from losing any more of his realm. Surprisingly, however, this Dawnwood jungle overgrowth isn't the most pressing concern for you and your fellow adventurers. Laramil the Wise, an ally of Hermaeus Mora, is back. She's investigating the reappearance of Athelia, the Forgotten Prince, who was introduced at the end of the Necrom chapter. Laramil reveals that scions of Athelia are searching the Westworld for her, wreaking havoc in the region. They believe that the Forgotten Prince had some connection to the Aeliads who once dwelt in the ancient ruins scattered throughout the zone. These scions are desperate to help Athelia recover her memories and powers and show no mercy to anyone who gets in their way. Reality itself is under attack and no one knows exactly how or why the Forgotten Prince has returned. It's been a very long time in any Elder Scrolls game since we delved into the nature of a new Daedric Prince. What effect will the appearance of this long-forgotten prince have on the Westweald, Tamriel, or Nern itself? How indeed can a Daedric Prince be forgotten? More importantly, how can you, the adventurer, counter Athelia's effect on the Westweald? Well, I'm not going to tell you. At least not yet. You have to play Gold Road to find out. But don't worry. In addition to the eccentric Laramil the Wise, you have some new and returning allies to help you unravel these mysteries. There's Baragon, ex-adventurer and brother to Evely Sharparrow, and Tribune Alia Idolus, a brash Colovian centurion working for Count Calantius. Outside the main story, we're bringing back the vampire Fenorian of the Ravenwatch, Khajiit investigator Mizik Thunderboots, and a few other fan-favorite allies to also help you in your journeys. There's political intrigue rivaling the tales told in Orsinium and High Isle, supernatural threats on the same scale as Somerset and Greymoor, assaults on the Westweald as powerful as any fiery dragon attack in Elsewhere or Daedric Dark Anchor invasions from the base game long ago. Players can choose how they progress the main story of the Gold Road as well. There's a non-linearity to the questline similar to that presented in Rothgar and Necrom. You'll have to follow the threads to see just where they take you. And over everything is the threat of the forgotten Daedric Prince and her minions. There's something for everyone all along the Gold Road. I'm looking forward to seeing how you fare. Good luck and happy hunting in the Westweald. Since ESO's launch, we've added a ton of new areas for players to explore across all corners of Tamriel and even the realms of Oblivion. Ed just shared some details about the story in Westweald, so now let's learn about how the team brought this space to life. To tell us more about this world you can explore in the latest chapter, we've invited ESO's art director to share more about this colorful but chaotic part of Tamriel. Hey everybody. I'm CJ Greb, Art Director for The Elder Scrolls Online, and I'm pleased to be able to share with you more about The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road's unique zone, the West Weald. For those of you already familiar with Southeast Cyrodiil, this will be the first time you can return to this bountiful part of Tamriel since The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion way back in 2006. The new zone features three unique biomes, each with their own distinctive look and feel. In the Southeast lies the Gold Road, a temperate environment similar to that found on the Gold Coast. It is home to the region's capital city, Skingrad, the bustling center of the zone and linchpin for the Colovian Imperials who call the Westfield home. Towards the southwest, you can find the Dawnwood. Formerly part of the Westfield, this area is now home to the encroaching jungles of nearby Valenwood. In this part of the zone, you'll discover a dense wilderness climate inhabited by advancing wood elves from the settlement of Vashabar. In the north of the West Weald lies the Colovian Highlands, a mountainous region that is home to an imperial settlement and numerous alien ruins. 
the highlands' rocky soil and dry climate is ideal for the region's famous vineyards. When designing this new zone, the team wanted to capture a region undergoing a dramatic change. And generally, we try to make every zone in ESO feel unique, so much so that a player can instantly recognize what zone they're in merely by looking around. Combining these ideas led us to paint the biomes in the bright colors of seasonal change. Highlights of orange, red, and yellow punctuate the West Weald, giving the entire region an autumnal feel. Classic Colovian architecture inspired many of the zone's structures. However, the Colovian Imperials of the West Weald are wealthy and cosmopolitan, so the art team imbued some high-end motifs and designs throughout. Although this, of course, changes the further from Skingrad you travel. As you explore the zone's rolling hills, rocky crags, bustling vineyards, you'll encounter many alien ruins of various sizes and shapes, and have an opportunity to delve deeper into this part of Tamriel's ancient history. We got to have a little fun here as we consider these alien ruins less spoiled than other similar locations you may already have visited. As a result, there are structures and architectural pieces of alien culture you've never seen before. Speaking of things you've never seen before, the dense, humid forests of neighboring Valenwood seem to have taken over a significant portion of the West Weald practically overnight. This consumption of traditional Colovian territory is cause of some concern for the Imperials, as you might imagine. Even more alarming is the Wildburn, a volatile area that separates the Dawnwood from the Colovian Highlands and Gold Road, comprised of sickened, magically twisted land and even more volatile beasts. While the land itself is changing, it is also under attack from a host of new, unfamiliar foes. Daedra, never before seen in the Elder Scrolls, roam the countryside, including Shardborn and aspects of Athalia that herald from the realm known as Miramor. And if all of that wasn't enough, the Wildburn has taken to magically corrupting the indigenous beasts of the land, resulting in danger around every turn. In the West Weald, We've created a beautiful world in flux, besieged by change itself. It's Imperials meet Wood Elves meet Oblivion, and it's a world unlike anything we've created previously. We can't wait for you to explore it. I always love when we can share behind the scenes info about all the research and care that goes into creating a new zone. Rich, why don't you talk a little bit about what else players will encounter in Westweald? In addition to the main storyline, the zone contains new delves and public dungeons to explore, side quests to experience, and world bosses to contend with. Everything you would expect from a chapter. There's also an all new 12 player trial to challenge your group and the introduction of a new type of world event. And of course, there's all kinds of rewards that you can find in the new zone, including new item sets to loot and craft, unique collectibles to unlock, and special antiquities to scry and dig up, and a lot more. And of course, that's all in addition to the new scribing system. That's right. In previous chapters, we've added new classes like the Necromancer and most recently the Arcanist. We've also added new gameplay systems that we continually update, such as treasure hunting with antiquities, our deck building card game, Tales of Tribute, even our housing and furnishing system, and of course, companion system, which allows you to bring an ally to fight alongside with you. This time with Gold Road, we're adding a new way to further tweak your builds just how you want them. We know everyone's been waiting patiently for more information on this new system, so let's kick it over to Kira to explain exactly how it works. Play Your Way is one of Elder Scrolls Online's biggest pillars, and we're always looking to give our players even more ownership over their characters and their skills. For scribing, our system focus was around roleplay and choice. We wanted to give our players the power to customize skills to enhance their roleplay and have more agency in choosing and creating those skills that are right for them. With Scribing, we've created a new ability for every weapon skill line and a few more. Each of these new skills or grimoires has customizable elements that you can swap out to suit your needs while maintaining a fun and balanced experience. Every grimoire has a base function, the thing it always does. For example, the new bow grimoire, Vault, has you shoot the ground with an enchanted arrow, creating an area of effect, and then backflip out of danger, enabling a quick tactical fire and escape ability. But 
you can personalize it from here. Every scribe's skill also has three script slots, a primary, secondary, and tertiary, which allow you to change the ability's specifics. Want to double down on poison or bleed? Set one of those as the primary script of Vault, and now that's the damage type of its AoE. Primaries determine the main effect of the skill and its resource cost. But perhaps you're more of a ranged healer character. Keep it ally-focused and customize Vault with a heal primary and add either a heal over time or stamina recovery secondary for any allies in that area of effect. Secondaries are about individualizing that skill to better match with your build or roleplay. This is where we have more unique effects that tie into the identity of the parent skill line. For example, a unique bow secondary gives the player a stack of the Hawkeye bonus, increasing damage on their other bow abilities for a short duration. Finally, you're able to add a buff or debuff to Vault as its tertiary effect, perhaps minor maim, minor expedition, or minor vulnerability. That is a lot of ways to customize just this skill, and we have even more scripts and combinations to be revealed in the future. But scribing isn't just a system for tinkering with skills. It's also an exploration into the ancient origins of magic, following the legacy and discovering the secrets of the mage who first learned to manipulate those energies. You'll need to own the Gold Road chapter to unlock the system. One more thing. When we were deep into this customization headspace, we loved the idea of having our skill visuals better reflect our players' roleplay goals, and perhaps feel a bit fresh if they've been playing for a while. When Gold Road and Scribing launch, we'll also be adding a select number of skill styles. These styles are color variants of popular abilities from weapon, guild, and world skills. Like Wall of Elements, we'll have a new purple version, Trap Beast, Orange, and Mage Light, a green option, so that when you equip those abilities, you'll be able to select which version you want to see. By the way, in Gold Road, all of these skill styles will be earnable as in-game rewards. We have a lot more planned for skill styling in the updates after the chapter, too. We can't wait to share more about scribing and styling with the ESO community in the coming months and see what new metas, builds, and more come out. See you soon. Scribing looks like it has the potential to really change the way our players play the game. We definitely believe it will, and scribing gives our players a level of flexibility with their builds they've never seen before in ESO. The new customizable abilities can be used by any class, allowing players to maximize an aspect of their build or perhaps give them a new way to fill a gap. And the system also provides a brand new avenue to customize their visuals too. And we know just how important fashion is to our community. Well, the good news is you won't have to wait too long to play because Scribing arrives with the Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road on June 3rd for PC and Mac and June 18th for Xbox and PlayStation consoles. And it's available to pre-purchase now. You can visit ElderScrollsOnline.com for more details. Now, as many of you watching might expect, this chapter isn't the only major release in 2024. There is a lot coming this year. We're kicking things off in March with Update 41 and our newest Dungeon DLC pack, which includes two new dungeons, Oathsworn Pit and Bedlam Vale. These two dungeons will have you explore a training ground for the followers of Malakath and a secret vault within the demi-realm of Maelstrom. Both dungeons help set the stage for the upcoming chapter release and storyline. These dungeons will be available in normal and veteran modes and have their own veteran hard mode difficulties with all the unique rewards you'd expect, including new item sets and collectibles. And as always with these DLCs, these new challenges can be purchased in the in-game crown store or they come free as part of ESO+. Plus. If you want a first look at these new dungeons, be sure and tune in to our next ESO live stream as we'll be joined by lead encounter designer Mike Finnegan to share all the details about this upcoming dungeon DLC. That's not all we have going throughout 2024 either. Update 43, which is scheduled to arrive in August, will be another base game update similar to what we did in 2023, and that includes a host of bug fixes and quality of life improvements with some pretty exciting features, including something housing related. 
And finally, Update 44 will close the year out by introducing two new in-game companions and something we're not quite ready to reveal yet. But to all our PvP-minded players, you might want to pay particular attention to this update. Well, you'll definitely want to keep an eye out for more information on our plans as the year progresses. Okay, we've gone over so much already, but as with any major chapter release, there's a ton of in-game rewards you can get when you pick up Gold Road. Let's find out more about the various editions and pre-purchase rewards for the Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road with community managers Jess and Kevin. Hi everyone, I'm Jess Folsom, ESO's lead community manager, and I'm joined by my fellow community manager, Kevin Bully. We're here to tell you a little more about the new Gold Road chapter, its additions, and pre-purchase rewards. Thanks, Jess, and hey, everyone. As mentioned, the Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road arrives this summer on PC and Mac and on Xbox and PlayStation consoles. However, you can pre-purchase the chapter right now on ElderScrollsOnline.com and unlock in-game items, which we'll cover in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the different versions of Gold Road. Right. Depending on your history with the Elder Scrolls Online, there's bound to be an edition of Gold Road that suits you. If you're an existing player, the upgrade versions may be just right. If you're a new or returning player, the collection might be a good fit. It includes the ESO base game, all seven previous chapters, and the new Gold Road chapter at launch. That means the collection will allow you to begin your adventures in Tamriel right now, and play the new chapter once it launches. Both the Gold Road upgrade and collection are also available in deluxe editions, which includes a bounty of additional in-game items themed around the West Weald and Skingrad regions, including a unique pet, memento, outfit style, emote pack, and first of its kind mount, all of which are granted at chapter launch. Whichever edition of Gold Road you choose, there are several pre-purchase rewards you can unlock. These include a striking new costume, pet, and crown crate delivered at launch, and instant in-game access to the spectacular Wolf Mount. For a limited time, if you pre-purchase Gold Road, you'll get instant access to this matching Wolf Pup pet, so don't miss out. You can pre-purchase the Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road right now on ElderScrollsOnline.com, or select retailers for PC and Mac, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Of course, we have a lot of exciting releases, in-game events, and community fun lined up for The Elder Scrolls Online between now and chapter launch too. You'll be able to explore two new dungeons launching along with Update 41. You can get a first look at these new dungeons and Update 41 by helping us test it all on the PC and Mac public test server in just a few days. Then, this spring, ESO will introduce the prologue quest for Gold Road. This free quest line sets up the events of the upcoming chapter and is available to anybody who owns a copy of the Elder Scrolls Online. If you'd like to check out some of ESO's past DLCs and chapters for free, then now is your chance with the ESO Plus free trial live right now on all platforms. There's also a ton of fun in-game events lined up over the next few months, including the now live Guilds and Glory celebration, then the White Strikes Mayhem PvP event, and of course, the fan favorite Jester's Festival. Starting right now with the Guilds and Glory celebration, you can earn the Moloch Ball Illusion Imp Pet, as well as its morphs over the course of 2024. It's the perfect companion to get you in the celebratory mood as we head into the incredible 10th anniversary celebration for the Elder Scrolls Online. To learn more about this year's morphing collectible, check out our preview article on the official ESO website. We've grown in so many ways since ESO first launched. With international community managers across 15 unique territories and seven officially supported languages, this massive celebration of ESO and its community is our biggest one yet. And it will include many in-person events around the world. As Matt mentioned earlier, the fun kicks off with our first in-person event in Amsterdam, Netherlands, and continues all the way into 2025 with our largest in-person event in the US yet. We hope to see you at one of them. Check ElderScrollsOnline.com for the details on our upcoming Quarter One Dungeon DLC, the in-game events, and our 10th anniversary plans. We have big things ahead. 
We can't wait for you to join us as we celebrate 10 amazing years of the Elder Scrolls Online together. All right, so let's recap. We've revealed ESO's upcoming chapter, The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road, and shared what kind of adventures and features you can expect when it launches June 3rd for PC, Mac, and June 18th for Xbox and PlayStation consoles. This includes a new zone, the Colovian region known as the West Weald, which is a storyline that features the return of a forgotten prince, Athelia. And of course, the brand new scribing system, which allows you to unlock and customize special skills for all your characters. And don't forget, ESO Gold Road is available for pre-purchase today. We've got a lot planned for ESO's 10-year anniversary, which includes a host of in-person events, starting with the ESO 10-year celebration in Amsterdam this spring. Make sure to RSVP if you haven't already done so. From all of us here at ZeniMax Online Studios, thank you for watching. Keep an eye out on our social channels and ElderScrollsOnline.com for more information on everything we've covered today. And don't forget to tune in next week for a first look at Update 41. We can't wait to share more details with you on the upcoming Gold Road chapter, anniversary celebration, and more later this year. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you all next time.